What's up, YouTube? My name is Jared. This is the next episode of Cavalry's Packs. I am super excited about this one. By far the most expensive box we have opened in Cavalry's Packs. This is 1986 Topps Football. What we're doing with Cavalry's Packs, we're opening vintage sports cards, showing you what we get. Then we're gonna set them away for grading. We're gonna let you know what we paid for the box. We're gonna let you know what we got for the cards once they're graded and essentially let you know if we made money or lost money on the box. So we are diving in today to 1986 Topps Football. All right, 1986 Topps Football. I bought this, this is not authenticated, but it is sealed by a reputable company. I am confident that this is a fresh, untampered uh, with box. Um, and there's some massive potential here. So we're looking for a few Hall of Fame rookie cards, primarily the Jerry Rice rookie card. If we can get that at a PSA 10, it's like $50,000 plus. So granted, keep in mind, we know how hard it is with this vintage stuff, get cards and graded that high. But even at a nine, it's about a $3,000 card. Uh, we are invested into this box for $3,165. So a pretty good investment. We wanna see at least one Jerry Rice uh, PSA 9 minimum. Um, but keep in mind, the set is only 396 cards. This box has 36 packs with 17 cards per pack. I did the math ahead of time. That's 612 cards. So ideal, I mean, we, we should probably hopefully see a couple of the key rookie cards of each of those, or else I'll feel a little bit disappointed. We'll see what happens. Um, other rookie cards, Steve Young. Steve Young at a PSA 10 is a $30,000 plus card. That's a, his rookie card as well. PSA 9 is dropping down to about 1,500 to 2,000. Still a very uh, high-end, nice card. Um, Reggie White rookie cards are in here. His 10 is only about 2,000 plus. I say only, obviously that's still a very nice card, but 2,000 plus. Um, at a PSA 9, that one drops down to about $200. So just to give you some context on the values of the key rookie cards, there's some other nice stuff in here too that I'll show uh, as I see it get pulled. Um, Let's dive right in, 1986 Topps Football. So again, I think this is sealed. I don't think this came sealed back in 1986. I think it was sealed by the company that I bought it from, uh, but highly reputable. I'm very confident with the authenticity here and I'm very excited about this box. Oh, look at that, it looks so crisp. Really cool art back then too. Oh, I wanted to point out who's on the front of this box. Jim McMahon is right on the cover, but then you go to the side and we got Chris Collinsworth. Kind of threw me off. I mean, I guess I knew he played played uh, played football, right? I just know him as more of a commentator now, but uh, love him or hate him, right, Jordan? I don't know, I guess he was respectable enough as a football player to put him on the cover. I mean, you got Jim McMahon on one side, you got Andre Tippett. I know he's a name that I know, and you got a team card of the New England Patriots. Were they a thing back then? I thought they weren't really a thing until Tom Brady era. Uh, I guess 1985 AFC champs. All right, anyways, let's open these things. All right, and this is wax packs. So this does have the wax issues on the back card. Um, they did seal these with wax, and there's gum in here. What year are we talking about? 1986? I might try it. Compare, I did, did 83, I did what What other gum did I eat? 70, 78. 78 is the oldest I got, and that definitely tasted like dirt. 83 was actually not that bad, to be honest. And actually this gum, I don't think it's gonna hurt it. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, so there's what the gum does to the cards. Bad idea to put gum in cards. Um, but I thought it was, it didn't stick to the card. Like when it opened, the gum is just right here in the pack. But definitely destroyed our bow back card. So I'm really hoping our key rookie cards are not on the back. That card is like demolished. Look at the front of it, good gracious. All right, so other guys I'm looking for, Walter Payton, Joe Montana, Dan Marino, John Elway. There's Andre Reid rookie cards and Bruce Smith rookie cards, Boomer Esiason rookie cards, Bernie Kosar rookie cards. Those are all lower value, but in high grade condition, it wouldn't be too bad. Quite a bit we're looking for. Hopefully we see something pretty quick. All right, I'm not, I'm not loving the centering I'm seeing. I mean, if I had to hand pick a card, Still gonna be hard to find one that's perfectly centered. Um, first pack didn't really have anything of note. I mean, definitely some notable players. Howie Long, Anthony Munoz, but nothing that we're looking for in this stuff as far as key cards. Let's keep going. Oh, Chris Collinsworth. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Not on my key card list. Jordan actually asked me if he could have that one if I pulled one, so there you go, Jordan. I'm gonna put that aside for you. Roger Craig. Again, not one of note. I'll just show that card, just to show centering. I mean, how hard that's gonna be to get that perfectly center. I mean, if you're looking at tens, it's gotta be spot on, perfectly center. And again, back in this era, centering was not something that they really had on their priority list. Yikes, these thousand yard club ones. You can kind of see the front of that. The, they're a little bit glossy. And these are inserts that are in these packs. I don't know if they're maybe one a pack. Yeah, it says 1000 yard club glossy card inside. It says it right on the pack. The problem with this is the glossy has basically stuck to the other card that it's next to, so. We got a few uh, few landmines to avoid in these packs. We're hoping that our Jerry Rice and Steve Youngs aren't in those slots. Yeah, I 
I'm not seeing a single one that we're looking for yet. I'm just, I know that we will, I'm confident we will, but uh, so far pretty quiet. Ooh, Walter Payton one. Oh man, Let's see if it sticks. Uh, if it sticks, I probably, yeah, it's probably, I mean, that's a gradable card, I would imagine. I didn't see this on my list, but the problem is, it, I'm gonna put that aside as a potential, but it definitely took off some of the surface color, which is gonna really hurt us. Nothing that we're looking for yet. Oh, here's, I haven't tried the gum yet. Kaiser, you wanna try some of this? Yeah, come on over. Oh, that's actually kind of soft. Mine didn't crunch. Okay, cheers. Cheers. Oh, mine is actually soft. It's like, oh, it's like powder. Yeah, and then it goes to the powder very fast. It does. It's straight powder. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was weird though, because usually it's super crunchy. This what one, this? yeah, that's, no, it's still, don't spit it out, that's cheating. Yeah, it doesn't form into gum, right? No, not at all. But you get kind of like that bazooka gum flavor. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a piece of candy. But yeah. that's what threw me off is this was super soft. And that's probably why, I mean, it's still like got moisture to it. That's wild to me. Man. This must have been kept in like a, like a humid climate for all these years. So Kaiser doesn't give that one rave reviews. All right, there's a Walter Payton on the back of this, which actually is okay. The front is, this side is where the gum is. I'm still thrown off that the gum was was actually uh, like soft. I thought it'd be, all the other ones have been crunchy. That's a nice card right there. That's Walter Payton. This is card number, oh, card number seven. I don't have that on my list either. Interesting. Record breaker Walter Payton. I'm definitely gonna put it aside because I think that has grading potential. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Still haven't seen the key cards we're looking for, but we got a long way to go. I'm not too worried about it. Oh, Steve Young, there we go. There's our first key card. Steve Young rookie, and it's it's looking pretty sharp. It's just, again, that's not a 10. I mean, you can just tell by just looking at it that the centering alone is gonna keep it from a 10. Maybe a nine, I don't know. I don't know how, how bad they ding us on the centering. I mean, it's not terrible. It's actually left to right, not bad. It almost gets crooked too. It's kind of got a little crooked slant to it. But hey, there we go. We got one of our key rookies already. And even if that gets a nine, that's a 1,500 to $2,000 card. If I had to guess, I'm thinking probably an eight, but we'll see. Here's a Lawrence Taylor. Not on my key list, but it's looking pretty pretty crisp there. So even if, it, if it's any kind of Hall of Famer like that and it's got 10 potential, I should probably consider sending it in. I'll put it aside for now. I'm not certain if we're sending that one in or not. Oh, Jerry Rice, got him. Interesting. All right, so the card's looking pretty good overall, I think. Top to bottom, we got centering issues and there's some defects on the card. Uh, again, 1986, I mean, when you look at any of these cards, the print quality has some issues like that. You can see it up there in the top left and like in the nameplate. Maybe that's why this card is so impossible to attend. I'm not certain. Hopefully we see, get another one and can, can kind of compare the two. But uh, as far as just, you know, corners, edges, surface, I mean, that's pretty packed fresh. There's some sort of like print line or something going on. See if that comes through on camera. Down at the bottom, like we're kind of right through the yellow all the way across. It's almost like a little, I don't know, some kind of factory print line or something. We'll see, that one's gonna be interesting. So there's a Joe Montana. Um, one of those cards is probably not worth it unless you're at least getting a nine to send in. But like raw value, I think it's about a $10 card. However, on in graded condition, the $10 card can shoot up real fast. Question of the hour, did Joe Montana make Jerry Rice or did Jerry Rice make Joe Montana? That's been an office uh, discussion for many years here in the office. Oh, there is a Reggie White, and that is a rookie card. Doggone, it's in a bad spot. Actually, wow, that peeled off really nicely. So let's see, let's do the reveal, see what the front looks like. Nah, not great. But that was in a bad spot because it was stuck. The bottom two cards get damaged by the gum in this because I think the gum just had so much uh, moisture over the years, but I mean, definitely worth sending in. It's just when you really scrutinize the centering, it doesn't feel like any card is centered perfectly. Oh, Jerry Rice. All right, the same defects on this card. So again, it looks really crisp. We got our second one, we can't complain. Everything looks identical. I guess that print line isn't there, but look at that thing. The exact same. Let me I'm gonna grab the two here in a second and show them side by side. That might be part of the story on why a 10 is so difficult to get is because of the, uh, the image has the defects on it. And if they ding you for that, I'm not certain they do, but I can't imagine a PSA 10 sitting in a holder and having those defects on it. So there they are again, it's almost the identical card. 
But again, corners, edges, everything is what we want to see looking good. It's just those defects, exact same place, everything. That's crazy. All right, well, whatever the first one grades, I think the second one's gonna grade. But if those both get nines, if we get a third, that'll be a score. But I still think we have a good chance of getting another Steve Young or Reggie White. And we've avoided the landmine positions too. So can't complain too much about that. John Elway, I think that's the first John Elway we've seen. Still some of the same printing issues. This is again about a, like a $10 card, just raw. So um, at a high grade, it's worth it. But I just don't know what they do to us on the printing, those printing spots. Walter Payton, Thousand Yard Club. We'll see what happens with this one. Not gonna happen. These must be really hard to get in high grade because every single one ends up like that. Look at that surface. And they definitely are gonna ding you for that. That's not a factory printing problem. That's a gloss destroyed over the years problem. Joe Montana right on back. It's not a bad spot. That's right on the back. So that is where the wax closed the pack, but it doesn't seem like it really affects it in these ones. Let's see what the front looks like. Yeah, kind of about the same. I don't feel like I've gotten any of the star cards with perfect centering. It's always just a little bit, a little bit off. But still worth sending. I'll send it, put it aside. It's a Walter Payton record breaker. It actually came off pretty clean. I'm a little bit surprised. That might be worth it. It's actually looking pretty well centered too. So that was in a tough position because it was a second card in where it sticks, but, but it came off clean. And I think part of it is because it sticks to the back and the backs are pretty forgiving. Fun fact, when did they stop putting gum into sports cards? I don't know the answer. So it's not really a fun fact, it's a question. Kaiser's over there Googling right now, I can hear it. It's gotta be, they, I don't think they did it in the 90s. There's a Dan Marino in the bad spot. That's our first casualty, our first good casualty. I'd rather have it be that than one of our key rookies. You have an answer over there? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. The last year they did it was probably 80, Oh, this is 86, 89, no, 88. 91? 91? Yeah. Really? I bet that comes really good. We should probably get some. Oh, Steve Young. Ooh, it's looking pretty good. Buccaneers, don't know him as a Buccaneer, huh? How long was he on the Buccaneers for? Another thing I don't know the answer to. There goes Kaiser, Googling. 85 to 86, so one year or two years? That might've been one year, because it carries over, right? All right, four packs left. I think if we can get one more, I feel like I've already, it's already exceeded my expectations, or at least met my expectations, I'll say. If we can get one more of the key cards, I think we're gonna be feeling really good. Oh, there's a Boomer Esiason. Oh, it's in the bad spot. I mean, it's one of our lower tier rookie cards as far as value goes. So I'm not gonna lose sleep over it, but. I think that's the first one we've seen, unless I've skipped over one unintentionally. Man, good thing that wasn't a Jerry Rice. Be sad. Not gonna send that one away for grading. All right, two to go. Chris Collins, double Chris Collinsworth. Look at that, 1,000 rece yard receiving club and the regular one. You're welcome, Kaiser. Or not Kaiser, you're welcome, Jordan. Filling up your pile here. That one came off fairly clean too. This was my last pack, nothing. Well, other than Colin, other than Colin's worth. Okay, all right, not bad. All right, let's do a quick recap. That's where we cut the video and then we clean up and then we. All right, so we ended up with two Steve Young rookie cards, two Jerry Rice rookie cards, one Reggie White. So I really feel like I'm pleased. I feel like it was, uh, it met my expectations. Obviously it all hinges on the grade of those cards. But I think we have shots at nines on the Jerry Rice and Steve Youngs. I, I don't know what they do on those Jerry Rices about those uh, those print defects. So that's really the key to all this. If they hurt us, if they ding us on that, I mean those cards might be sevens, eights, and then we're we're in trouble as far as getting our investment back. But uh, overall, I think it was a great box. Um, can't complain. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to throw all the cards that we're not going to going to send away for grading. I got to go through these one more time to see if I missed anything. But I'm going to put them all back in the box. And we're gonna ask you to do one thing. We're gonna pick somebody to send this entire thing to. We're gonna send you the actual original box, all of the cards that we're not sending away for grading. We're gonna just ask you to answer one question in the comments. Let us know who you think 
made the other, Joe Montana or Jerry Rice? Did Jerry Rice make Joe Montana what he is? Did Joe Montana make Jerry Rice or somewhere in between? Let us know your thoughts on that. Um, that's been an ongoing uh, conversation in the office for, for years, to be honest with you. Um, so we're gonna send this to one of you. The other thing we ask you to do, um, subscribe, hit that bell. Uh, we have a lot of other videos just like this. We're opening vintage cards coming up and then some other series that we're doing too that I think might interest you. So check out our channel, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell, and we'll see you soon for another episode of Cavalry's Packs. Ha <laughs> ha.